I did an internship um, in Costa Rica many years ago. It's actually 2008, and there was about 10 or so people, and I was I watched them go through a 28-day water fast. This whole group, they sort of did it together, and it's just it's fascinating. So, um, can you talk to us more about like? What does that process look like? How, how do how do people like make it that far? What do they do? I mean, do you recommend they stop working? Have to take time off? Um, like, how, how does that just how does that go down? Yeah, that's that's an important question, and you know, the length of your fast really dictates um, your activity levels. If, like you saw, if you're doing a 28 day fast, you really do need to take time off. Um, your body will need yes. more rest. You will not have as much energy. You may get lightheaded with a you know vigorous activity after the tenth day, fourteenth day. So it is important to be able to pull back if you're going to do a longer fast. Uh, <clears throat> you know the process of of starting a fast and then going through a longer fast. You know is really uh, understanding kind of the stages of fasting and what's happening during those stages. Typically, in the first three days. You know, uh, your body is beginning to shift over from a normal meta metabolism into uh, using ketones, ketosis. Um, and so as your body shifts into this ketosis, you're, it starts to utilize fat as its primary source because it's not getting glucose as the primary fuel for the body. So during that, that first three days, you may experience uh, some fatigue. Your body can also undergo some withdrawal and detoxification. If you've been, you know, using sugar, fat, and salt as a part of your diet, if you've been on animal products, you will experience some withdrawal from those, those foods. Um, and depending on your physical condition, as your body starts chewing up fat, we store all of our toxins in our fat, and so you can have some of this, this heavier toxin load that enters your bloodstream, especially in the early part of a fast, that your body has to. Um, to detoxify and remove. And so it's not uncommon in the first three to four days to go through some detoxification, some food withdrawal, some fatigue, some headaches, some challenges. And so, you know, it's important to understand this as a part of the early fast because oftentimes people will start, you know, they'll get beyond 24 hours into the 48 hour, 96 hour time frame. They start to feel bad and have headaches and they think to themselves, I can't do this, this is not for me, my body does not respond to fasts, I need more calories, I must be protein deficient, you know, all of the, the, common, um, uh, the common pushbacks to fasting, but you know, what they don't realize is they're just on the cusp of getting into a really sweet spot, a sweet spot in fasting, where your body shifts into kind of a ketosis metabolism, you gain more energy, your body starts to heal and detoxify, and you really move forward, you know, after about day four, um, you know, all the way into day 10 where you have like really vibrant energy. And so just getting through the first three days and understanding that it can be a challenge and that your body is just um, working out some of those challenges is really, really critical. In that second like four to 10 day uh, season, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful season. You know, when we remove food from our lives, um, we free up our metabolism and our body's um, systems to begin healing itself. More than 50% of our daily metabolic workload is involved in processing food. And so by freeing up that metabolic workload, uh, our cells can begin paying attention to parts of the body that have been damaged, damaged through dietary indiscretions, through environmental exposures, through inactivity and stress you know, your body will pay attention, even old injuries. It's not uncommon for someone during a longer fast that's had a knee injury or an ankle injury to experience pain in that area of their body because their, their immune system is now paying attention to that part of their body and the macrophages are chewing up the damaged tissue and their body's beginning to lay down new collagen and new tissue, including the arteries. Um, it's also a really important time because you know, food is a challenge to our immune system. Uh, it's an outside coming inside, and it comes with lots of other things. And so our immune system is always heightened while we're eating. But during a fast, our immune system can be more quiet. It's, it's uh, at rest. And so those people with autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and psoriasis, their immune system can really scale back 
and all those parts of their body that are being attacked by their immune system, whether it's the skin, the lungs, um, <clears throat> the kidneys, they can actually begin to heal because they don't have that constant uh, barrage of immune system uh, attacking. So it's an, a beautiful opportunity for the, especially people with autoimmune diseases, to see a significant reduction in pain and inflammation and the immune system to begin resetting itself. And then when we get beyond two weeks, you know, that's when uh, the body can really see um, dramatic healing. Uh, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, uh, who's going to be a part of our upcoming conference on June 19th on fasting, has uh, published in um, lots of amazing uh, peer-reviewed scientific journals, uh, incredible case reports, and, um, and uh, cohort studies showing, uh, you know, amazing reversal of disease with longer fast, that 14 to 30 day range, when the body actually begins reversing disease. He's even, um, you know, published uh, long-term case trials of people with tumors that have undergone an extensive fast and have seen their tumors completely chewed up and removed. Uh, and have, you know, they've been in remission for years after a long fast. So that 14 to 30 day phase is when people can experience dramatic healing in their body and reversal of disease. I'm so glad you brought all that up because extended water fasting is really one of the most profound medical interventions, if you even want to call it a medical intervention, I've ever come across. I mean, the, the stories are just incredible. And oftentimes, people who end up trying that approach are at a last-ditch effort anyways, um, that they finally found out about it. And um, I'm just glad you brought that up. So another important point here, I think, is that you just brought up Dr. Alan Goldhammer from True North, which is ex doing an extended water fast must be done under the supervision of a expert who's done this before. What do you think is the longest fast somebody would safely do at home on their own? Yeah, you know, I think um, it, it's qualified based upon the person's health. If you have hypertension, uh, like you said, you know, uh, if you are just non-insulin dependent uh, person living with diabetes, um, you know, you should not fast for more than a couple of days uh, because your blood sugars can plummet dramatically, you know, even within 24 hours. So anybody with hypertension, um, type 2 diabetes, uh, as you said earlier, people living with uh, type 1 diabetes should never fast. Um, but those, those conditions where you're on medications, you need to be under the, um, under the, uh, the oversight of a physician who's following up with you on an almost daily basis to make adjustments to medications because it works that quickly. Your body you know, gets well that quickly that you'll need to make those adjustments. If you're healthy, um, you know, like myself uh, and my wife, you can do, you know, I would say five to seven day water only fast at home. Um, but if you're going to go longer than a week, I really do recommend that you have some professional uh, oversight, somebody helping you through those next, um, that seven to 14 or longer water fast. And if you're going to go beyond two weeks, you really do need to be in a place like True North, a fasting clinic, where they can check in on you every day. Um, and they may actually step in at some point and say, listen, you know, it's, you've done a great job, but we need to stop fasting now and transition to a diet because there are those, those lines that, um, you know, can be crossed. And I, I have friends that have, you know, done long fasts uh, in the past and they actually fasted too long and they ended up injuring themselves in the process. So, you know, it, it is something that does need some professional guidance and, and should not be taken on uh, lightly. Yeah, the, the wealth of knowledge and experience that, you know, somebody like Dr. Alan Goldhammer and his team have is, is, just, is just priceless. Now, one thing I think that people don't focus on enough or pay attention to is the refeeding process after an extended water fast. So can you speak to the importance of that and, and you know, your experience and insights into, like, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, that is exactly right, Robbie. You know, we can talk about fasting, but... The most important thing uh, about fasting is what you put in your mouth after the fast. You know, there are lots of, of um, stories of people that went through long fasts, had significant healing, went back to a normal westernized diet, and their disease came back. 
I had a number of patients that did this that I worked with and they went through long fast. They did incredibly well, but they went back and they did not realize the power of food. They started, you know, adding back in small amounts of sugar, fat, and salt, a little bit of ice cream here and there. And before they knew it, right back down the road of the Western diet and their diseases came back. And so the refeeding process is, is absolutely critical. And, you know, I always think about it after I've gone through a fast personally, you know, I have just like cleaned my body out. It's just like I took an amazing shower and just cleaned everything up. You know, I don't want to put anything dirty back in. And so I am looking to, you know, I, I just picture my cells are waiting with open hands to receive this amazing gift of food to really nourish and finish the healing process. And so I, I'm very intentional and conscientious about what I put back into my mouth after a fast. Um, after a long fast, it's important to remember that your, your gastrointestinal system has been at rest for a week, two weeks, or if it's a really long fast, it's been at rest for a month. And so the stomach is small, uh, all the enzymes have been down-regulated, and so we need to start slowly and let the system reboot so that we don't injure it in the process. Um, you know, right after a fast, like some easy things to add back in are melon, uh, honeydew melon, some uh, cantaloupe, a uh, small amount of blueberries, you know, just enough, a uh, little bit of um, vegetable broth, uh, you know, just small amounts of, of something to just get the system warmed up for the first 24 hours. Uh, and then after that, add, add back in, you know, more um, uh, raw fruits, raw vegetables, even a vegetable juice to help the body start getting, getting itself ramped up over day two and day three. Uh, but after day three, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to increase the uh, exposure to raw fruits and vegetables and to really, you know, take your diet to the next level after a fast. You've just done such an incredible job of pushing back, you know, the intrusion of westernized food that's always knocking at our door. You have overcome cravings. You've cleansed your body. You've reduced inflammation. You've, you know, charged up your immune system. Now you can really boost your, your life by getting back onto, a, um, you know, an even better whole food plant-based diet after, uh, after a really good fast.